The Boys, Season 2, Episode 5, Beware the Jabberwock, my son. I gotta say, I am not going anywhere near a farm anytime soon. Let's talk about it. All right, Brent here, back for Geek Variants to cover all things Marvel, DC, Lord of the Rings, anime, gaming, Star Wars, and more. This time, the boys, and I gotta say, tons of big faces, tons of big cameos, tons of important scenes to discuss. Without further ado, Chaos himself. Yo, uh, Huey's dad? Yeah, he was on one. He was on one for sure, so... I did not expect it to go the way that it did, but it made a lot of sense. So that was some good writing. I think that uh, Huey Sr. went out on a positive note, but just the way the setup is, we still don't know officially who gave him the V. I mean, I got a 95% sure answer of who did it. Because she said she did it. You know, you know, uh, according to, you know, because she's what, 95% sure that freaking, okay, it was her, but when did it take effect? Like, when did it really, like, kind of kick in to, I guess, accelerate his brain failure? When, we don't when... really know too much of the specifics on that. We just know that whatever goes in you, it accelerates whatever was good and or bad or what was currently ongoing, much like the Captain America serum in your favorite cinematic universe. So because it's older, it goes faster, right? That's the, that's the general synopsis of how V works. The older you are, the more damaging it is to you, which one reason why they give it to infants. Mm -hmm. Seems to be the good theory at this moment in time. Right. So... Huey's dad on one goes out, you know, the best way he possibly can with Huey making the advanced directive. So that's a nice little callback to the power of attorney kind of going to his mother. So he actually has to make the advanced directive decision and keep him from becoming Jar Jar, which lovely Star Wars reference there for the cat that didn't make it. So that's one. Um, Edgar's back. You were happy to see this one. So tell me about Newman and Edgar and their situation. Because, look, anytime you're going to get Giancarlo Esposito in any bit of film and literature, I'm begging you guys, please hire this man. Keep this man busy. His acting skills are phenomenal, and him as Edgar is a great lead. The fact that he was able to sift through a lot of the BS and a lot of the shenanigans that was going on with everybody and everything the minute he saw Butcher was very, very telling. This man, well out the game quote unquote is still more caught up than 99.99 percent of people on earth he created the monster that is Voss. he created the monster that is newman but he made a few miscalculations and he didn't expect newman to go about things the way she did and the fact that he found out from butcher of all people who's not going to tell you the right way that hey newman Compound V in her daughter, and now her daughter is this a tentacle face eating thing that terrified the ever loving crud out of me on a live stream. But, like, look, their family dynamic is terrible at best. But now the fact that we have everything playing out the way it did, now that we learned that Samir was Newman's husband and the father of their child all along having everything brought back into this nice little family perspective and that Samir was the one cooking up the very thing to remove all soups out of the world is got to be an interesting family dinner table conversation to have. And now that Edgar has, well, was removed for a little bit, brought back in, and then as he's being ushered back out, He's only going to be brought back in because we haven't seen the end of what's going on with Newman, who we know can make some interesting decisions on our own. There was something that I felt you really, really wanted to touch upon, and that was the brought the callback, I should say, to Gen V. Sam and Kate. You want to talk right. about it? 
Sam and Kate, again, they're Guardians of Godolkin. Like they are the members of Guardians of Godolkin. They are front and center now on the stage as part of the uh the, the Stark Expo kind of thing that they did. That was freaking, you know, that was nice. Stark Expo. And then they did like how the Disney does their their movie timelines. So actually showing phases for how all the movies are gonna be releasing. And I think that was a little shot at Disney because like they had so many projects listed on the board. But Sam and Kate are listing one of those projects and stuff to, you know, like a body switching thing, which is just stupid in itself. But they're going to be front and center and they're already getting ready to show their brutality for Homelander as far as what they can do, what they're willing to do. And they're going to be easy to be brought into the fold of the seven. So we can see them actually acting as guardians of the Godolkin. It's something they can set up for Ryan. If they want to have, you know, Ryan be the leader of that team and, you know, they have a team around him to kind of operate and we can kind of have like a teen Titan situation while Homelander is off being the justice league. That's definitely a thing that can happen or they could end up getting folded into the seven at some point because it's a good chance that some members you know may be removed because uh, they may not be able to keep up with the changing times and with some of the rumors and stuff that i've seen about the shows coming out um i don't know if a train is going to make it all the way through this season because we already know that he is the rat he is the one to giving stuff out sage knows about it and that's going to be one of the biggest things is how sage decides to handle this situation because we've already seen a lot of infighting within the seven and everything that's going on between their biggest news reporter the deep sage firecracker again there's always been infighting but right now sage has got a plan and she is kind of her, her whatever her plan is is in motion like things are gonna be falling to pieces and when something goes out of whack she's able to pull it back together pretty quickly and set up whoever needs to be set up to make the next piece fall. So it's uh, definitely very interesting to see like ultimately where they're going to go with all these characters. Cause like sister Sage and firecracker don't like each other. A train the deep don't like each other. Homelander is the only thing holding everybody together. And black Noir is just there with his popcorn wondering what the heck he signed up for. So it's going to be interesting to see how that transpires. But when they had the snitch brought forward, it was very telling that as he said, very astutely said sister sage was literally eyeballing a train the entire time not even looking at the violence that was transpiring eyes directly on a train letting him know i know what's going on but i'm gonna let this play out why she's letting it play out when we know ashley is the one that just fed this guy straight to the seven that's gonna be interesting to really get into and more of that story kind of unveils because a train now has looped ashley into this and all she wanted to do was just get a good old shot at homelander by leaving a floater and now look at her she's accidentally ended a man's life because he thought he could dump her and get away with it oh uh, we gotta be very careful about again whatever she does you know in regards to homelander because he's creating a mini version of himself. Like Ryan is starting to be more and more involved with Homelander shenanigans and Homelander is being more and more influential since his, his trip. Like we already saw that, you know, it was kind of like Ryan was leaning towards butcher a little bit and for that, but now Homelander has been telling him stuff, showing him the rewards, the gratification, all the stuff that comes with doing what you want, getting what you want. And now Ryan is feeding into it. Again, watching the extortion happen and then the beatdown happen and him getting a kick out of it and enjoying his drink and stuff like that. Like, that's why I think he could end up being part of the seven at some point or even part of the guardians of Godolkin just to give him a place and kind of run some stuff while we have Gen V and the boys running concurrently with each other. So that's going to be a whole nother thing and how Butcher deals with it. Like, I don't know if he's going to be able to bring Ryan back from the brink before it goes too far or if Homeland is going to push him over the edge and make him fly with him. So that's that's something uh, I, I don't know. I don't know if Butcher can do it. Uh, Butcher is fighting so many things, so many demons, so many battles. Like ultimately we saw him win at the farm and we had the crazy breakout with vampire sheep. Again, not going to be looking at a farm for a while. He made the risky play 
to take out Samir's leg, make everyone believe that he was gone and done with, only to circle back. Talk to the folks about your theory. All right. So as far as the theory goes, um, the soups are having issues uh, with their abilities right now. We see Starlight having abilities with her unable to use her powers and so like that. And Butcher is having the ability of not controlling whatever powers are coming out of him. We saw in the last episode, he decided to splatter, you know, old elastic guy. Like he had to get rid of him because his life was in danger. I think that whatever is in Butcher, which was similar to what they found in the, or what Butcher found in the rabbit, uh, the one of the rabbit looked a little bit more evolved, I guess, or bigger, so like that, because the way it's coming out. That's the same thing that's in Butcher, and it's causing problems. Like it's killing Butcher, and it will eventually kill him, but it will protect him long enough to make sure that it gets to where it gets whatever it needs. It's acting like a, you know it's a symbiotic relationship. So we're kind of getting a Venom reference here. He killed the one, easily stomped it out, but whatever's killing him is also helping give him the hallucination, the hallucination between Becca and Kessler. And every time we see Becca and Kessler, it's him talking to him, no one else interacting with them. The only interaction that we got so far is Kessler closing the car door, but right now I'm kind of attributing that to the more this goes on, the, the stronger the hallucinations are getting, so the more it's making sense to Butcher. Well, again, it could just be a show error, so I don't know. But the more it's making sense to Butcher and what could possibly happen as far as the symbiote kind of thing getting a hold of him. Now, the powers that exhibited from the parasite, I think whenever it's in danger, because Butcher's life was in danger, it's going to fight back. It's going to defend itself. It's going to defend its host because it needs its host to survive. So that's why I think when Butcher got close, the rabbit kind of, was, I couldn't tell if it was still alive or not. So, but the parasite poked out and was like ready to fight, but it didn't do anything. So I don't know what powers it generated. We already know kind of what powers Butcher has with that. He has some, some massive stuff going on. So whatever the powers are could be transferred to the thing and that could be what is kind of setting up. So it may not have been able to project anything or it may have been too new or didn't have a strong enough dose, whatever. Butcher dispatched it. Butcher's version is a whole lot more volatile and a whole lot more dangerous. And I think Butcher is going to end up self-sacrificing at some point after he uses the parasite to take out Homelander. That's just kind of my theory. I think he's going to get one of those like syringes and shoot himself up with the, the poison after the soups are dead and he can finally rest. That's my theory. And, That's my role with it. And certainly last but not least, we have our final piece of the episode to kind of unwrap before I think we can start wrapping things up. I believe Frenchie has once again taken more initiative in his life than he has ever necessarily needed to take. I understand someone from a religious upbringing feeling the need for punishment, for retribution, but also there's a fine line between taking your own will and then playing God, so to speak. And Frenchie has decided to play God in his life and turn himself in because he believes his sins are just innumerable. They're too heavy. They're too much of a burden on him. And while Frenchie has a lot to atone for, is now necessarily the time where we need to address crimes in a group that, let's just be real here, for a long period of time, they were considered anti-establishment and it would have been on every possible list in the entire world. And now you decide, let's turn myself into jail when everybody needs me the most, including Kimiko. For French, Frenchie's whole thing, I think, is to give uh, Kimiko more shine. Uh, I think his whole thing, his self-wallowing, is to highlight his story and kind of get through his story. But I think it's also set up to kind of foster that relationship with Kimiko because she's mentioned about, hey, we can hold hands or whatever, and she's not getting a response back. So I think those feelings are kind of coming out. She's still got to finish her stuff uh, with her friend, friend that came up um, earlier in the in the season. So I think that, of course, she's eventually going to go get Frenchie or find him or locate him some kind of way. And Frenchie's going to get out and she's going to kind of get him out of that self-pity mode. And then Frenchie's going to kind of be back to form at some point. And they're going to have a better relationship, stronger relationship. And maybe he can do something to atone for his sins outside of kind of condemning the team because the, the team needs Frenchie. Frenchie's been a very vital part of the team. Frenchie don't need to go nowhere, but 
again, he just made a des- decision and ran with it based off his emotions. And he's also he he did a little he did a little stuff beforehand. So I don't know if any of that stuff is still kicking in or if it's worn off. The sheep might have scared it out of him, but we'll see. You never know. The sheep scared a lot of things out of me. Hopefully, what is scared out of you watching this recap is hitting that lovely red subscribe button, bottom right corner, or the red subscription box below. It's completely free. Helps us out. And at our 1,000 subscriber mark, we have a giveaway for each and every one of you for a couple lucky winners especially. So be sure to hit that lovely red subscribe button. We cover all things Marvel, DC, Lord of the Rings, anime, gaming, Star Wars, and more. I have been Old McDonald. He's been Chaos Incarnate. We'll see you in the next.